Welcome to the second video of the CSGO sticker tutorial. In the last video, we talked about the needed tools to create stickers. We also created a glossy sticker, added an alpha channel to it, and exported it as a TJ and VTF files. In this video, we will view the sticker in the SDK tool. Let's start with creating the VMT file, which will contain all the information about the sticker. If you've created skins before, then this file is the equivalent to the TXT file of a skin. I'll create a new file and name it angrychickenglossy.vmt. Each sticker type has some specific settings that need to exist in the VMT file. Therefore, to avoid any problems, the best way to start editing the file is by copying the appropriate settings from Valve's documentation. Navigate to the glossy sticker section and copy-paste the settings. For now, the only thing that we'll change is the base texture value. This should contain the absolute path of the VTF file, and it should be in the format I'm using here. Note that I'm using regular slashes and not the backslashes that are normally used in the file paths of Windows. Do not forget to save the file when you're done. Let's take a look at the SDK tool. The part relevant for the stickers is the model viewer, so double click on it. When the model viewer loads, go to File, Load Model, scroll down to the end and choose the sticker preview.mdl. Now we can see the default sticker. Before loading our sticker, let's see how the controls work. We can zoom in and out by pressing the right mouse button. Left mouse button will allow us to rotate the sticker. To move the sticker, press Shift with the left mouse button. You can also control the light by pressing Ctrl and left mouse button. In order to load the sticker, we need to go to the Materials tab in the panel below and choose Sticker Preview WIP on the left. Click on the Replace VMT button and choose the VMT file of the sticker. The purpose of the SDK tool is to view our sticker with different settings. This is how the Angry Chicken sticker looks with default settings. In order to view the settings list, click on the Sticker Preview WIP again. We can now see the settings in the middle. Now we'll play around with the values of the settings, but keep in mind that if you decide to save any of the values you change, you should do so manually in the VMT file. There is no save option in the SDK tool. Let's take a look at the important values that we can play with. Scroll down to the end of the list and click on Wear Progress. This value enables us to control the wearing of the sticker by moving the pointer. When the pointer is to the far left, the sticker has the factory new look, and when it's to the far right, it has the maximum wear look. We can see that the maximum wear is not enough because the body is still showing. We can modify the maximum wear in the wear width max value. I'll lower the value until I get the desired look. Now it looks better, but we can still improve it more. Let's take a look at the unwear strength value. This value controls how clean to keep the important areas of the sticker when it wears out. By important, I mean the areas for which we painted the alpha channel with dark values. Let's keep raising the value until it looks good. And now it has the same look I had in mind when I applied the values to the alpha channel. Since we're satisfied with the result, let's copy the wear width max and the unwear strength to the VMT file. Last thing I want to show in the tool is how to view the sticker on the weapons. For that we need to go to File, Load Model, scroll down to the end and choose the Sticker Preview folder. Here we can see all of CSGO's weapons. Let's choose the AK as an example. We can see that it's loaded with four default stickers, which we can change by choosing the values at the left and clicking the Replace button. If you're happy with the result, then you can start taking screenshots. Go to Options and click on Make Screenshot. For some reason, the tool will only save the screenshot as BMP files. 
but you can change the format to JPEG in any photo editing tool, such as GIMP or even Microsoft Paint. It's still strange to me that this is the only available format, because the workshop only accepts JPEG pictures. In order to keep our files tidy, let's create a folder for the pictures and save the screenshot there. That's it for this video. In the next video, we'll be talking about how to create the holo stickers, so stick around.